Hey everybody, so yesterday I did a grant writing workshop and I um, I tried to record it and it didn't work out. So I'm just going to do a quick recap kind of solo here just so that there's a bunch of people who wanted to attend the workshop and, and couldn't make it at that time. So I promised uh, a bunch of people a recording of the workshop. So here it is, man of my word. Um, so we're going to go through kind of everything that's in this factor development, uh, artist development grant application. It's a pretty simple application. And I'll, uh, I'll try to incorporate some of the questions that people had asked about it yesterday in the workshop. And uh, yeah, I'm going to move pretty quickly through it. But feel free to like, you know, send me a, a DM or send me an email to uh, Kyle Winjack, or sorry, Kyle at Winjack Studios, uh, dot com. And uh, yeah, we'll uh, we'll get going. There's also um, like by the end of, of this, you should have like a pretty good idea of you know how the application is going to go, and you should have all the uh, sort of resources and tools that you would need to do the application on your own. But uh, if anybody does want some extra help, some one-on-one -on -one sort of guidance, not only with this grant but with sort of prospecting what other grants you might want to apply for throughout the course of 2023. Um, I am available for that as well, but uh, I'm gonna try to just give as much detail and guidance as I can um, for free. And then, you know, if you want something that's like more specific to exactly what you're doing, then, you know, that's, that's an option if you want it. Uh, anyways, the Factor Artist Development Grants, um, if you're successful, you receive $2,000 to help with basically uh, anything to do with your music career, anything that's gonna push it forward. There are some limitations, uh, we'll talk about that. And uh, and there's a couple of caveats, but there's also workarounds for most of those caveats. It's, uh, yeah, you're, you're gonna love it. Um, <laughs> so the deadline is February 2nd, so that's coming up. Uh, right around the corner. The good news is that it doesn't really take that long to apply. It's maybe like one to three hours, especially if you already have um, like an artist bio and uh, maybe a website. It's not mandatory that you have a website for this though. But um, what you do need is a recording to send in. It doesn't have to be um, like super professionally produced or anything. It doesn't hurt if it is. But, uh, and I think certainly for a lot of the other factor grants, like the juried sound recording, which is a bit, uh, you know, it's intended for uh, artists who are a bit further along in their career for that, you definitely want to submit something that's super polished. But because this is kind of a, like an entry level thing, it's, um, I think the juries are kind of looking more for the potential of the music and, um, you know, you want to present it as well as you can, but it's, I think it's understood that, you know, not everybody has the budget to, um, to like hire like a really reputable or high quality uh, producer to work on their stuff. And that's probably why a lot of people are applying for, for stuff like this to, uh, you know, take their art and, uh, be able to present it to the world in a way that's, uh, you know, better and more satisfying and to use that to kind of like, you know, take the next step. And I think a lot of people think that grants are sort of a charitable thing. And, you know, to an extent they are like, they're there to help artists, but it's not, um, it, it is a business, it's an investment from the government. Like they want to know that if they give you this money that you're going to use it to make more money in your music career and, you know, stimulate the economy by hiring other musicians and, um, and, uh, producers and, uh, you know, putting on shows and, uh, get, like trying to get people out and just, you know, um, keeping the whole scene kind of robust. So if you can kind of, um, make a case that, that you're able to do what uh, what you say you're going to do with uh, with the money, and that that's going to have a big impact on your career and preferably other Canadians' careers as well. That's a really great start.
So the application process itself, uh, like I said before, is very simple compared to a lot of other grant applications. I've had certain applications that I've put in 30, 40 hours to, maybe more. Um, but this one, quick and painless, no worries there. Um, and it's also got a relatively high success rate. It's still competitive, but because the amount is relatively low, um, it's two thousand dollars per successful artist. They can, you know, they can afford to uh, to give that to quite a few different artists. Whereas, you know, some grants can be fifty thousand dollars or more. So there's going to be uh, more competition and less uh, um, less successful applicants for for those larger grants um i sort of touched on this before but it's also got a low barrier to entry in terms of um like they don't care so much about like your your accolades and your uh previous achievements and they you know they care about your skill and your potential uh more than anything whether or not you've won junos like it's intended for emerging artists. So um, if you've released, if you've been releasing music for over three years commercially, so that means like um, put it, putting it on streaming platforms primarily, like if you have stuff on Spotify under your artist name that's from uh, more than three years ago, then you're actually not eligible to apply for this. You have to apply for the juried sound recording factor grant instead. Um, but there are also a bunch of other grants from Canada Council and uh, the various provincial councils and your municipal council and stuff like that as well. Um, so I have a grant calendar on my website that probably a lot of you already have, but that's there as well. And uh, yeah, so moving on here, let's go um, flexible budget allocation. So like I said before, there's a lot of different things that you can spend it on. You can spend it on touring costs, uh, recording, making music videos or like uh, online content to promote your stuff, uh, marketing budget. So that can be like, um, you know, printing posters um, or uh, running online ads to promote uh, a show, especially if it's like a CD release show or something. Well, not a CD, nobody does CDs anymore. <laughs> but um, on that note, there, um, there are a few things that you can't spend the money on. Um, so that includes, uh, they're all listed right here and it's not an exhaustive list, but all of the stuff in this, um, in this section here with these accordion links there is taken directly off of factors website. Um, so you can, you know, feel free to, uh, peruse that on, uh, on your own time as well. But uh, equipment purchases are eligible, but only for up to two hundred dollars of the total uh, of the total budget. But um, uh, there's no cap on uh, recording costs or uh, touring, marketing, video production, any of that stuff. Um, when if you're if you're touring you can't claim uh like per diems or like food and stuff like that on your budget um you can't claim uh any like merchandise um like manufacturing costs i i mentioned posters before i mean i guess you can make an argument that that's sort of a manufacturing cost so you know it depends on how the jury would interpret that because it's it's a marketing cost as well. So that one's maybe a, a gray area if you wanted to play it safe, just like don't mention that. But um, the cool thing about the budget, a lot of grants when uh, when you submit a budget, you have to do like an itemized um, sort of proposal and tell them like exactly what you're gonna spend on each thing and where you're gonna buy it from and uh, you know who you're gonna work with to, um, you know, for uh, like graphic design, for example, or anything like that, you have to actually get vendor quotes from everybody that you're that you're trying to 
work with or to buy uh, materials or anything from. This grant is way simpler than that. You literally just, there's a few categories and it's like, how much are you going to spend on marketing approximately? Uh, how much are you going to spend on touring? And you just, you know, you estimate for the four or five categories and uh, yeah, it's kind of just left at that. Um, and then there's, there's a couple of uh, like short answer questions where if you want, you can get a little bit more specific about it. Um, and we'll, we'll go into that in a minute, but I think there's like a couple of sort of things that are crucial to make clear in that short answer section. So just to recap uh, what you can and can, can't uh, spend the money on, um, it's basically anything except for artist residencies and songwriting retreats uh, and cost of living. But I mean, if you really wanted to do a retreat and like bring along a um, an interface and, you know, write some songs and, and track them, then, uh, you know, it's sort of a retreat, but you could claim it under a recording session instead. That's an option. Um, and then you're not allowed to use it for like lessons or, uh, or like mentorship, that sort of thing. Um, uh, or like taxes, which, you know, probably most of you aren't planning on using it for that anyways, but, uh, yeah, union dues, um, fines, pensions, like, I, I feel like most of this is pretty, is pretty logical, but, uh, essentially anything to do with like producing your music or videos and promoting it all good fair game so yeah let's uh we're kind of going out of order here but that's okay so who can apply um it's you know it's for emerging artists like i said if you've been releasing music under um under your artist's uh persona for more than three years then you're not eligible and if that's the case, definitely look into the uh, the jury sound recording grant. Uh, that deadline, I don't know off the top of my head when it is, but I think it's in a couple of months. It's not super soon. Um, this is a good point here. So applying multiple times in a year. If you're approved the first time that you apply, then you can actually apply again at the next intake. There's three intakes per year, uh, approximately four months apart. And so if your first um, application is successful, you can reapply four months later. But if it's not successful, you have to wait a year. I'm not really sure why they do it that way. Um, I'm sure they've got a good reason for it. But yeah, that's the way it is. And so, yeah, you just want to make sure that, uh, that your first application is as strong as possible so that, uh, you know, not only can you win that $2,000, but you can you know, get another $2,000 potentially, uh, four months later. And if you don't win it, um, you know, there are plenty of other grants that you can apply for, but, uh, yeah, it's, it's just about showing up and, uh, putting your, your best work in front of, uh, in front of the juries and, you know, eventually you'll get, uh, you'll get some funding happening. So, uh, for anybody who, uh, anybody who's like applying, who has, any sort of disability, there's, uh, it's called a recipient accessibility support fund. And, um, I, I, I don't know like all the details of this program, but I just wanted to point out that it's there. Um, so if that sounds like something that you'd be interested in exploring, just, you know, look it up on the factor website. And I, I believe that you can sort of access those funds as like an additional um, grants on top of any of the factor grants. And it's intended to like help people who are disabled to like apply and submit strong applications. Um, so they can help, you know, hook you up with, uh, with grant writers and, and that sort of thing, I believe. Um, all right. So let's go over here. This is the, um, like the actual, uh, questions from the application verbatim. And, you know, the first section is kind of just general 
information like what's your genre um, you put in your your artist bio your website social media stuff you know um the one thing that i will say uh about this that's not obvious is that the main genre that you select you can there'll be like um like a bunch of boxes or it's like select all the genres that apply because a lot of artists are really versatile and you know maybe their sound is kind of like a blend of different things so yeah there's an option for that but you also have to select a main category and that's important because the jury that's going to be assigned to review your application is um it's curated based on what you select as your main genre so if you put pop as your main genre you know there's going to be a bunch of uh, uh like pop musicians or or like musicians who are like well versed in in that genre and likewise you know if you put jazz it's going to be um a jury full of jazz musicians so that's just to prevent like um you know they're probably judging on slightly different criteria so for example if you were to put pop as your main genre in my opinion i think you have to like make sure that it's very um like radio friendly very um you know n not necessarily conventional but like if it's more of like an experimental kind of like indie pop thing like you might want to consider choosing a different genre because you'll be judged on uh, maybe the wrong criteria if you don't select the genre that most closely represents your music so okay the artist development plan this is this is kind of the bulk of the application and it's really not not that much it's um uh, it's two uh two questions plus an estimated budget and each of the questions are uh you know a 2000 and 3000 character limit so it's you know it's not like you're you're writing a novel here but um it's important to really be like clear about uh about your goals and how um there's two main things one is how the grant would impact your career because they want to um they want to throw this money at the people who are going to uh benefit the most from it not necessarily who need it the most um but who will do the most with it right um but then the other side of that is you have to um with any grant i think one of the most important aspects is uh, something called capacity which is basically can you do what you say you're going to do with the resources that you have so if for example you say that you're going to record a full-length album and uh and do like like a nationwide tour from this grant that's you know giving you two thousand dollars to work with like they're they're not going to take that seriously unless um you know you can claim in your budget that you're also investing like uh, like fifteen thousand dollars of your own money or money from other sources or whatever then you know maybe that would make sense but the key thing is that your your goals your strategy and your growth plan really has to like make sense um and uh i'm going to backtrack for a second back to the budget here because uh there's one thing that i didn't mention and that's the uh, two thousand dollars that factor grants you is the maximum amount, um, which by the by the way you should apply for the maximum. Um, it only covers seventy five percent of your total budget, so you need to get that full amount. You need to claim that your budget is going to be more than um, I think it's two thousand six hundred and sixty seven dollars. So two thousand dollars would be seventy five percent of that um so you kind of have to contribute an additional uh let's round it up let's call it 700 dollars. but um you can also claim 500 dollars worth of work of your own time or time that uh 
maybe that your band members are contributing. So if you're doing, uh, you know, if you're recording an EP, but you're mixing it yourself or, uh, or you're doing the graphic design, you know, any of that sort of thing, you can claim $500 of that. So that right there will bring your total budget up to $2,500. And then you just have to make up, uh, for the extra, like $167 or whatever it is. And, you know, you can probably just claim stuff that you would be spending that money on anyways. Um, I feel like most people who are pursuing a music career, you know, they're, hopefully they're spending more than $200 a year on it regardless. So you can, um, uh, you know, you can use that, uh, that $200 gear allowance from the budget, you know, if you're buying anything with pedal, uh, microphone, you know, um, you can also, if you're doing a tour or something, you know, claim the, claim the fuel or even fuel for, uh, uh, for local gigs, I think would be eligible. And, um, you know, like I said, the budget when you're submitting it is really not that, uh, it's not that specific. You just kind of have to estimate it. And then, uh, you know, if, uh, if it changes slightly, if your plan changes a little bit, that's not a big deal. Um, I mean, if you say that you're going to spend it all on recording and, and then you don't record anything and spend it on touring, like that's, you do have to do a final report and, um, they're not going to come knocking on your door and, and asking for the money back if you don't do it, but you just can't apply for any more grants if you win a grant and don't do the final report. So you gotta have that, uh, cleared up before you can apply for anything else. All right. So, um, the first question here is detail where you are in your career and provide an overall strategy and plan for growth in the coming year. Describe your challenges, ambitions, and where you hope to be after your artist development year. And, um, yeah, that's, it's an open-ended question. Basically, as long as you can, uh, be convincing that, uh, you know, just sell your, uh, sell your story and sell, uh, the, the impact that, uh, that your plans are, are going to have and how, um, how the development activities will contribute to your overall strategy and plan. Um, that's the next question down here. So, uh, yeah, it's, um, I mean, I could, I could run through an example, but I feel like everybody's, um, everybody's kind of strategy and goals will be a little bit different. So, uh, you know, like I said, as long as you're really clear about it, the adjudicators only have like 20 minutes to read everything that you submit and listen to your music. So a little bit of repetition is not a bad thing. Um, and just like keep it simple, really clear, really concise. Um, you know, make sure it's well edited and that the, the grammar is spot on and everything. Cause they don't have time to, they'll, they'll basically be skimming it and, uh, you know, or at least that's what you have to assume. Uh, so the assessment track is a really big part of the application. Um, basically you just submit an MP3 and the lyrics, if, if there are lyrics, and they will listen to that. I believe if it's more than three minutes long, they only listen to the first three minutes. Um, you can still submit a longer track, but uh, yeah, just know that uh, that if you're submitting a 10 minute like prog rock epic, that they're only gonna listen to the first movement or whatever. Uh, yeah, and then you put in the, you know, title of the track, run time, uh, there's not much to that. You'll, you'll figure that out. I'm sure. Um, public funding section is just like, if you're applying for other grants, uh, especially if you've already applied, uh, for them, just, you know, claim that there. And, uh, if not, then you can just skip it. And, uh, yeah. So, you know, there's, there's really not much to that. You can get through that in, uh, in an hour or so, um, there's also 
there is a section where it's kind of like additional materials and you can submit whatever you'd like is all optional but anything that you feel like would strengthen your application one thing that i would recommend submitting is um, a reference letter a lot of grants will have that as a requirement this one doesn't but i think you know doing that extra step sort of uh, could be the thing that helps your uh, your application stand out especially if the reference letter is from somebody who's like reputable in the industry and they're familiar with your work so uh yeah just consider who's in your network who might be willing to uh, uh to do that for you and make sure that you send it out like early like you that maybe should be the first thing that you do in your application so that they have time to uh to get back to you and what i like to do is actually i'll i'll send them a message i'll be like hey like uh would you be willing to do a reference letter for this grant i'm applying for i can save you a little bit of time by sending you a template and then you can just edit that to taste and people appreciate that because you know they're busy and um yeah they'll be probably more willing to help you out if you've already done most of the work and you make it easy for them so uh yeah a little pro tip there uh and then in this section you know these are not necessarily specific to to factor but they're um kind of for any grant that you might be writing over the next uh year or lifetime and first one be clear and concise i'm gonna leave it at that um, <laughs> Uh, the second one, be persistent, and especially with a lot of the bigger grants, they like to see you reapply. I've had applications that I've gotten feedback from where they're like, yeah, it was a great application. We loved it. Try again. Because um, it was my first time applying for that specific grant. Um, the Factor Artist Development one, I think that's less of... Um, it's less of an issue because it is meant for emerging artists. So you're more likely to get it on a first application. Um, and there's no, a lot of grants will have like a field that you check where it says like, have you applied for this grant before? You check yes or no. And then um, if you check yes, it's like, well, did you get it? And if not, what have you done since your last application to sort of move that process along. So that's usually for the bigger grants. They really want to make sure that you're kind of dedicated to it before they give you a large sum of money. Um, so, you know, just something to consider. All of the smaller grants are, are good because you're more likely to get funded, but it can also be worth starting that process for the, the larger one and kind of, you know, get the uh, foot in the door and it's a bit of a longer term strategy. Um, but uh, yeah, uh, tip number three is to be proactive. So, you know, it's stuff like I was talking about before where you send out your, um, uh, like anything that you need an external response for, which for this one, you might want a reference letter. A lot of other grants, like I mentioned before, you need vendor quotes and you need, uh, sometimes you need several reference letters and, uh, you know, the requirements can be pretty extensive. So, um, yeah, starting early on a grant application and especially, you know, anything that you need a response from, you start that even earlier. And, uh, it's a good idea to submit the application the day before that it's due, at least just in case you have any, uh, any technical issues. Um, cause you don't want to, uh, you know, put time into it and, and not even have your, your grant, uh, submitted. I've, uh, I've had that happen to me before where, you know, I wasn't able to submit the, the grant I left as the last minute and, uh, you know, I was working on it, kind of perfecting it. And then like five minutes before the deadline, I hit submit and it wasn't working. Um, I called them the next day and, you know, they were able to submit it manually, but it's more stress that way and it might not always turn out that way. So started early. Don't be like me. <laughs> um, so the fourth one, we talked a little bit about this. It, it says B 
be realistic on the on the header here, but I think um, like it's cool to have big goals. Just like make sure that they line up with like the resources that you have. So um, I mean, money is obviously a major resource, but also it could be um, you know your skills and the network that you have around you. So um, you know, let's say for for this example if if my total budget is like twenty seven hundred dollars and i want to record a full-length album that's if you're if you're hiring like a, a producer and session musicians and everything to do everything um or at least a lot of the work that's you're gonna run out of money quick it's not really realistic so if that's the case maybe do like a single and then you've got some money to promoted as well because they don't want to invest in something that you know sounds great but nobody hears so you also need to have a marketing component you don't necessarily need to have a marketing budget um but if you don't i would strongly recommend you know outlining how you're going to market it organically and um and maybe like you know if you've had success in in the past maybe you've sold out a, a room uh for an ep release that was like 100 people or something you can mention that and that you did that organically um you know but on the other hand if i wanted to do a full-length album and i have a really awesome home studio and you know i have the skills to track everything myself and and maybe mix everything myself but I just need somebody to master it and then maybe a, a marketing budget on top of that, then it can make sense to, um, to have like a full length album on that same budget because you have the capacity in, in your skills that you're bringing to the table. So uh, I hope that makes sense, but it's, it's a bit of a moving target. Just make sure that you're, you're really clear about how you're going to accomplish each thing um and that you're not leaving anything to the imagination like they want to be sure that if they invest in you that you're going to um record something if it's a recording project it could be touring but i'm just using recording as an example because i think that's what most people tend to use this for they want to make sure that the product is going to sound good and i think they would rather have less material that's of higher quality um and that uh that people are are gonna hear it and you know you don't have to get like top 40 radio play there's like it can cost hundreds of thousands of dollars in marketing to to crack that like the expectations aren't um they don't have to be crazy but um you know tell them about the social media marketing campaign that you're going to run and how you're going to use um, like a combination of organic uh, organic traffic and maybe like paid traffic on TikTok or Facebook or, or whatever it might be. Um, all right. So the fifth tip that I've got here is to be resourceful and you know, we, we've also touched on this a little bit in terms of like leveraging your network and making sure that, uh, you know, that you're getting the best reference letter that you can, uh, making sure that, uh, you know, that you have somebody edit it. It doesn't have to be like, um, like a grant writer per se that's edited. It's cool if it is, cause they might understand a little bit of like what buttons to to push and maybe what to avoid but um you know use the tools that you have available and um if uh even if it's just somebody editing your work for grammar and clarity um there's also a benefit of having somebody who's not a musician at all edit it because if they can understand it then you know, it means that you're not using too much jargon and, and stuff like that. So sometimes a few different perspectives can be a good thing. 
um, in terms of how they're actually going to adjudicate you, they've, uh, they've published this little rubric. And the cool thing about this is 75% of, uh, of your like scoring of your grade, I guess you could call it is the song that you submit. So, um, you know, 25% is under song. So that's writing arrangement and composition. Um, and, uh, the vocals and lyrics category, somebody was asking me like, well, what if it's instrumental? And there is a stipulation in the, in the guideline that if it's uh if it's an instrumental recording that they just sort of substitute the lead instrument for this category. So rather than vocal and lyrics, it's like, you know, the, they're kind of like rating the performance of the saxophone or the lead guitar, like whatever the, prominent feature is. Um, and then musicality is the third, uh, the third sort of, uh, category here. These are subjective. Uh, obviously I think when it comes to, to art and m music, especially, I think, uh, yeah, it's, it's going to come down to the, the jury and whether they, uh, they like what you're doing or not. But, um, uh, yeah, in terms of the production quality, there's no, you'll notice that like, there's not really anything, um, like stipulated in that rubric about production specifically. Um, I think, you know, like if, if I was on a jury and I'm, and I'm listening to something and it's like really well recorded and it's like, you know, it sounds beautiful and everything like that's just naturally going to leave a better impression. But, um, you know, I think they're trying to kind of listen to the song first and foremost, and, um, you know, submit the best thing that you have. That's all I can, that's all I can really say. Um, so 25% of it is your, uh, you know, the, the written portion. And uh, it says in brackets, including additional materials. So, you know, having a couple of, uh, of extra little things in there could give you that extra few percent that, um, that kind of bring it over the top because a lot of people, you know, have great music. There's no shortage of that. Um, so what they, what's going to set you apart is, you know, your plan of what you're going to do with it and kind of the, the little extra things that, uh, that, uh, just help your music stand out. And that's true. I think not even just with grant writing, but, um, you know, with like getting gigs and getting publicity and, you know, everything in, uh, in this business. So yeah, and I've got, I've got a section here that's kind of, just uh, saying to take the first steps today, not to like wait until the last second to apply. Um, one of the main reasons for that is um, because you have to register, you need a applicant and artist profile in the factor system. And that can take up to a week to process. I think a lot of times it's quicker than that, but um, you know, you just want to make sure that if you haven't done that, that you do it ASAP, there is still time. Um, at the time of this recording, at least. I don't know when you'll be watching this. Um, yeah, we talked about editing a little bit. It's a great idea to get somebody to, to edit your stuff. And, um, you know, your reference letters are, you want to leave them time to get back to you. And then the fourth one, like for me, if I, you know, if I, if I say like, oh, I'm going to apply for this grant and I kind of don't do anything right away to get started on that, then it may or may not ever happen. <laughs> um, but I find that, you know, if I open up that portal and I, you know, at least start like drafting up some, uh, some of my responses and stuff like that, then I've already invested some time and it's easier to kind of continue with that momentum. Um, that's what I find personally anyways, but, uh, yeah. So in terms of what's on the application, that's, um, yeah, that's, 
that's the majority of it. And uh, if you have any questions, yeah, definitely reach out and let me know. Um, if you wanted to do like a one-on-one -on -one 60 minutes call, um, we can definitely do that. And I'll not only help you with your, uh, your factor application, but um, I can give you, I'll show you an example here. Um, so there was a project that, uh, you know, there's this band that wanted to, uh, to do some touring and I, you know, I kind of got an idea of what they were doing. I'm like, okay, well maybe you should go for the performing arts center market because, um, it can be really lucrative. And I think that this project would have a good chance there. So I sort of tailored, um, kind of a game plan of like, uh, different grants that would be good for that specifically. And then, uh, this Pacific, uh, contact is actually not a grant, but it's like a, like a showcase that, um, that the talent buyers for that specific market go to find new talent. So I just sort of like identified all of the, uh, opportunities and resources that make sense for this person's project. And then, uh, you know, I included like some podcasts and stuff like that are, that are pertinent and have more information. So yeah, I try to like, just give as much general information to everybody as I can, but if you want like specific, um, guidance on what you're doing, then, uh, then that's an option too. And, uh, if you go for this package before the, uh, the factor artist development deadline, I'll actually edit your application for you. And, uh, and you'll have my phone number as well in case you're working on and you won't need to text me for some sort of quick, uh, question or have me look at something or whatever it might be. Um, and I had this like early bird special on just to encourage people to apply early, but for anybody who's, uh, you know, made it this far in the webinar, I want to offer that the same deal, even though it's, uh, it's expired. So there's a, a coupon code. If you, you know, if you hit the, the checkout, um, if you put uh, factor 50 in the apply coupon code, it'll give you 50% off of that. So you'll get that whole package for a hundred bucks, which I think is a great deal. Um, but uh, you know, if you, if you don't have the money for that, or if you don't feel like you need it, that's cool too. I hope that, uh, um, that you got a lot out of this, uh, this workshop and, uh, yeah, I'll see you all around. And, uh, if you, uh, if you see me at a show, come and say hi, that's it. All right. How do I end this thing?